Ayana Koji was trained to be a monster in chess by the White Room, and their training protocols were successful enough that he was able to beat even a supercomputer in the game. Though reaching a fictional peak is considered impossible, if there were an organization like White Room dedicated to turning humans into chess geniuses, what methods would they use? If you want to become a chess genius, watch until the end. Cause today, you'll learn the frameworks to improve in chess from beginner to expert level. So it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an experienced player, you can derive value from this video. I'm going to show you how to level up from any stage, from beginner to advanced, and tell you everything related to what skills you need to master and how to practice, exactly like a white room instructor. So this might be the only chess video you'll ever need to watch to become a pro. At this stage, you start out as a noob. You know how the pieces move, but don't know the tricks and tactics. You can't figure out what your opponent is plotting, and you can't anticipate their moves in advance. You might even get checkmated in two moves. And that's okay. You need to be a beginner at first to become a master. There are four things you need to master before moving up to the next level. The first being the most important thing in chess, the opening. If your opening is weak, you stand no chance against your opponent. If you don't have any opening of your choosing, my recommendation is that you learn the Karo Can and the King's Indian setup. I'm going to give you a practice routine later. But first, always remember one golden rule, which is one thing at a time. At the beginner stage, you tend to be impatient because you feel somewhat bad for not knowing all the winning techniques and strategies. And to level up faster, you try to learn multiple things at once. But what you don't know is that it makes you progress even slower. Multitaskers have a massive disadvantage over players who focus on one thing at a time. They don't master the opening and start learning middle game strategies, and they fail against someone who has mastered the opening. Forcing moves are when you compel your opponent to move according to your own plan. This is one of the powerful techniques you can learn as a beginner to increase your winning rate. If you master this, you're literally going to control the game. There are basically three types of forcing moves you need to understand. The first one is a threat. A threat can be applied at many levels, but it simply means putting your opponent in a tough spot and gaining an advantage from their move. You don't need to go complex here, because at this stage, you can't really predict others' moves. You can just be simple and attack your opponent's important pieces with your non-important pieces, creating a threat. Just by doing that, you gain a massive advantage over the opponent. The next forcing move is capture. Look at the board in front. Here you'll see that white is threatening to capture black's queen using his rook and knight. Here, black cannot do many things to protect his piece. If the queen moves to either of these squares, white will give checkmate. And when the queen takes the rook back, white can win a forced capture. And the last, most powerful one is checkmate. Here, white gives checkmate using his rook. Now, black can only move in this block but it's also claimed by White's bishop. Leaving him with no options, White forces Black to defend the attack with his queen and wins a capture. Great! Now you know the basics of controlling a game. But wait! In the heat of battle, your mind stays so occupied that you can't see these forced moves. Rather than making your opponent react, it seems that you instead react to their moves. So how do you pinpoint these clever moves even amidst chaos? Pattern Recognition Pattern recognition simply means remembering similar successful moves from previous games and using the knowledge in the current game you're playing. It means that you've watched this strategy and tactic played out so many times that you can instantly recognize it and plan for it. Players with a high yellow count have exceptional pattern recognition. Though from the outside, their fast moves make it seem like they have exceptional fast thinking capability, what it really is, is pattern recognition. That's why people who have spent more time inside the ring than others have a high chance of winning because their brain can recognize successful patterns faster than others. The best way to build pattern recognition is by doing lots of puzzles. Then when you start playing, your brain starts connecting the puzzles you've practiced and searches for the winning move. Another way to improve is to not play on autopilot. It can be the single worst thing you waste your time on. You learn nothing and play mindlessly. So when playing the game, Keep your eye on the board, focus on fixing the mistakes. There's one skill that chess grandmasters spend the most time developing that makes them better than anyone. It is their memory. It's not a secret that having an exceptional memory will set you apart from the rest. 
Because chess is a game that depends on how well your memory is. But how do you train that muscle? Especially to do better in chess? Not to talk about the active recall, sleeping better, and repetition stuff. We all know that. Rather, I found an exercise that you can use to improve your memory along with your calculation ability and pattern recognition. This is a visualization technique. What you have to do here is try to imagine a chessboard and its colors in your mind. Now, if I tell you to visualize an exact chessboard, you probably can't do that. So try this. Imagine the first six blocks on the corner of a chessboard and try practicing it until you can instantly picture this in your mind. After you're comfortable with that, try adding the pieces in your imagination that come into these squares. As you also get comfortable with that, try expanding one block on either side and ingrain it in your memory. As it gets easier, keep expanding the board until you can visualize the whole board at once. Okay, now that you've leveled up from beginner to intermediate, here I'm going to show you how you can always stay one step ahead of your opponent, the secret to being good at chess, and the most efficient way to practice the game which will improve you 10 times faster than your normal practice method. In this stage, I'm assuming you've mastered the opening. But the next question is, after playing the opening, then what? Most people nail the opening perfectly, but then they get confused, and their opponent takes this chance to attack and gain an advantage over them. We'll not spend much time on this because there's more important things to discuss. But you do need to improve your middle game skills in order to win. Here are some essential middle game principles you want to incorporate in your game. First is trading your low value pieces for their high value ones. Let's think in the future for a moment. When the end closes in, your rooks and bishops are going to be generally more powerful than the knight because they're going to control more squares. So you want to find a way to trade their bishop for your knight. Use your rooks effectively. First of all, you should always look for ways to move your rooks away from the corners and control an open file. This is an open file. And once your rook controls an open file, it holds more power than anything. Now let's talk about building intermediate level skills, which will help you play better middle games and make you a monster in chess overall. This skill is essential as you move toward higher levels of chess. It's the ability to look at the board and understand where the game is going being able to feel what will happen in 10 moves. It is the ability to look at the board and sense the threats and opportunities. Is there any skill like that? Yes, and it is spatial awareness. Maybe you've heard of it before, but how do you develop the skill? To start with the most least effort way to build this monstrous skill is just by simply following that previous visualization technique. But if you're serious, there's another visualization technique. It's difficult, but works like a beast. Here you try visualizing the whole chessboard in mind, and play the game mentally without touching any physical pieces. Approach it like the previous one. First only try moving the pawns, and once you're comfortable with that, you expand your vision and move different pieces. Let's be real, it's a difficult skill that takes years to build, so don't beat yourself up for it. Just practice it daily with patience. Because with each visualization exercise you complete, you sharpen your spatial awareness like a finely tuned blade. As I've said earlier, yes, there's a more effective way to practice chess that will literally improve your chess skills 10 times faster. If you swap your normal practice method with this, you're literally going to compress 10 days worth of practice into one day. It is also how you move up to the expert level. So what is the system of that more effective method? It's a simple four-step process. Here's how the process looks combined with a real-life situation. One day, a psychologist began an experiment. He called a college student to his office daily to improve his memory. The psychologist would give him a string of seven digits to recite. If he was able to memorize them correctly, the psychologist would increase the number. However, if he got it wrong, two digits would be subtracted from the list. The student was once able to memorize seven digits, which was considered the maximum limit that a human could recite at that time. Session after session, he would try memorizing beyond that number and hit a barrier of frustration, being unable to recall more than that time after time. He continued to come each week trying to improve. Then one day, he managed to recall 11 digits. The psychologist noticed that a cycle would occur multiple times between the practices. This cycle involved hitting a perceived limit, prolonged frustration, sudden breakthrough, and rapid progress. It happened at digits 22 and 34 all the way up. Digging deeper, the psychologist crafted that practice method into four steps. The student had a well-defined specific goal. 
his target was obvious. After recalling 12 digits, the next was 13. Next, his practice period was intense blocks of uninterrupted focus. For a complete hour, he'd focus on just memorizing. He received feedback to make changes to his memorizing system. That feedback was immediate and easy to understand. He either got it right or wrong. Lastly, he was constantly pushed out of his comfort zone. There was frequent discomfort that made him operate on the edge of his ability. If he got that right, he'd move up a digit. But if he got that wrong, two digits would be subtracted. Other ways to move up to the expert level are to play with opponents significantly stronger than you and take help from an expert who has a trail of experience to teach you. Now, the practice routine for this is to use the four methods of practice from now on and incorporate it into your game and practice routine. Chess is a game that must be played in a calm state if you want to win. For that, you would need massive emotional control ability. To learn how to control emotion, watch this next.